can language text completely. So just a short, and again, uh, uh, actually wanted to hold a longer presentation in about 30 minutes to introduce more details, but uh, well, uh, only 10 to 15 minutes now, so it will be a bit shorter. Uh, I have a bit of the open document format about the language text and about the locales and the uh, Some may know me or not, I don't know. Uh, as you can see, I've been working on the open suite since 20 years now. I'm spending almost a lifetime there. Um, you can find on my website, or you can uh, look below the, the, the URL. Um, there's a pointer also to the uh, last uh, presentation I held at the LibreOffice conference at Milano that contains more technical detail than this one, so if you're interested in that, you can find it there. Uh, ODF 1.0 and 1.1 uh, define two attributes to uh, actually assign the language depth or just language or country. There's an FO language and FO country where you can have the ISO codes codes for the language and the country code. So, which is sufficient for many um, requirements, uh, but not for all languages. Then ODF 1.2 also defines the FO script attribute, where you can have the ISO code for the script code. Which, for example, for German would be the Latin default script. You can omit it as well because it's, uh, it is marked as a suppressed script. And uh, because German is only written in the language script. Which is different, for example, for Serbian, where you can have a Cyrillic script or a Latin script. So you need to di differentiate that. And only one or two also defines the various RFC language tag attributes uh, that can hold the full BCP47 language tags. So in this example, it is the SR Latin RS again, which is the same as the Apple language, Apple script, Apple country below. Um, if an application encounters such RFC language tag, it takes precedence over all other. Uh, FO language, FO script, FO country, we have two rules. So, um, if an application writes these attributes, it should write also the other three attributes, so SR, Latin, and RS. So, applications that can, cannot handle the language text are still able to, to read at least these basic information. Uh, the BCP 47 language text actually is uh, best current practice, so it's a, a set of evolving RFCs, which currently is 5646, previously were other RFCs. Um, for pointers for introductions, you can see the langtech.net, or at the other longer URL, it's my bookmarks actually what, what I uh, found uh, of value. Of finding that. So the definition actually is about language, script, region, you can have variants, you can have extensions, and you have, can, can also have private use text that you can use in your application as long as you don't distribute it in the document. And just an example is this CIA Valencia for the Catalan Valencia variant. <coughs> And another advantage of language text is that they are registered with IANA and don't change over time, which may happen, for example, with ISO codes. So ISO can reassign a code to a new meaning over time. So you don't know what actually you get there. And there are, of course, the defined variants possible that are not defined by IANA. So, for example, we have this German traditional spelling, the D E D E 1901, which is the old spelling, and the new spelling in Germany took place in 1996. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, <laughs> this British English with Oxford English Dictionary spelling, uh, the N E N G B O E D, which is important because the U N requires in all the documents that the spelling is uh, done according to that British dictionary. So this can be tagged now as well. Then we have locals and legal office that until legal office 4.1 uh, were only the ISO 639 alpha language codes and the uh, 
3166 country codes. Uh, so the usual EN or S or DED. Then there is the UNO API that uses the Comsan Starland local struct uh, that was designed after the Java local. And it has three fields, language, country, and variant. And these three fields are restricted to language, isocodes, country, isocodes, and the variant field is a more or less freeform field. As they say, always platform and application specific, so you actually don't know anything about what you could get there. We didn't support that at all, the variant fields, and we have only the uh, language and country fields. And the challenge was that the UNI API, because it uses this local structure uh, and the interfaces and all its methods and um, all the services that implemented its localizable interface, um, could not be changed, or if we would change it, uh, all, almost all extensions that are on the market would be incompatible at once. They wouldn't run anymore because the signature of the methods would change. So there was no way to replace anything there. So what we did then was uh, define a convention actually, the how to transport uh, the language tech in the, in the, in the Comsense level on local. So the old form, if local can be expressed as, as these two isocodes, uh, nothing changes, uh, just stays the same. So all the existing documents we have and all the languages supported prior to 4.1 or prior to 4.2 until 4.1, um, there is nothing that changes actually. For the new language text that, that are supported now, uh, and we place in QLT <coughs> language code in the language field, uh, which is an ISO 639 reserved for, for private use code. So it never leaves the application. We do not write it out to the documents or whatever. But if such a, a QLT is the language code, then the entire language tag is placed in the variant field of the local. And the country field may contain uh, the corresponding country code, but since uh, BCP47 does not allow only the, the country codes, but also, for example, the UN numeric codes that cannot be expressed as the alpha country code, uh, it could be that the country field is empty than there as well. So, and actually the summary of that is, if you're an extension developer, uh, you have to be prepared for that. So if you encounter a QLT code in the language, you have to actually decide uh, what to do with it. So if it is a QLT, you just take the variant as a language tag. Uh, else, if uh, there is no country, you have the, just the language. And uh, if there is a country, you combine language and country like you did before. Internally, LibreOffice has the class language tag that provides all necessary conversions and uh, from to language tag <coughs> and the Microsoft <coughs> local ID and all methods that are necessary mm -hmm. to, to access all the kind of information about the language tag.